Hello you guys, this is Josh Vision and I'm here to give my season 2 episode 1 review. So, in this episode, we have, um, we open up with basically these two women. Now, first you think it's probably one of the Peaky Blinders wives or lovers or something, and they have these two um, baby characters. So you think babies are in it, but it turns out it was actually um, a weird kind of covert um, explosion that happened because they like really put the two baby characters in the front of their of their pub and then it just psh, explodes so once that happens then you um, then we're, then we're, then we're watching the funeral of Freddie Thorne so at first when I saw this I thought wait so did Freddie Thorne die during this bombing and that's why we're getting an immediate like cut to his funeral so that's what I thought at first so at the funeral we have Tommy and Ada speaking about what to do next. And Ada doesn't want anything to do with the Shelbys. She was saying that she's not a Shelby and she's not a Thorn, you know, anymore. Obviously because Thorn died and she kind of um, distanced herself from the Shelby family due to her love of Freddie. So now that he's dead and so on and so forth, she doesn't want anything really to do with the family. She just wants to raise her kid and keep up, keep up the same stuff that her and Freddie had and continue to live where they were living at. But Tommy's like, listen, I'm ex expanding the family business into London. So that means there are going to be lots of enemies coming after, you know, people I care about. Obviously, you being that since you're my sister. So, you know, I'm going to need you probably to move back with the fam. She was like, no, nah, I don't want to. He's like, okay, you know what? Whatever. I'll just have my men be watching your back basically 24-7. And Aunt um, Paul, not Paul, Jesus Christ, I mean Aunt Polly, basically, she, um, she basically tells Tommy after Ada leaves that I told you, let me work on her. He was like, okay, you can work on her. But we have to make sure that she's protected. So after this, we have this interesting scene in which Tommy and Aunt Polly, they go to the bar. They see the wreckage. They're told by the police sergeant that obviously it was bombed, but that some that who, who do they know would do something like this? And I think when Aunt Polly went to the bar, she knows that there was some type of green confetti you know, amongst the rubble. So, I believe Tommy decided to go find out who it was. And he's led by this kid. So, I believe Tommy actually gets abducted in a way. And he basically um, is sat down in this chair. And they remove the, the thing from his head. And we see these two people. This guy and this woman. Now, I forgot which gang they're a part of. And all I, know, all I remember from the conversation is that they're against the crown or something due to some type of unequal fairness or treatment or something. Even though Tommy thinks they're kind of blowing things out of proportion when the crown wanted to try to enact peace with them. But either way, they kind of blackmail Tommy into doing something for them. And that is killing this Irish, this someone of, like this Irish guy of, of importance that belonged to some other group or something. So Tommy had to do it, basically for his and his family's safety, if I recall. So while this is going on, we have John um, asking Aunt Polly, what sense does, why, like, where's, like, where's Tommy? Where's Arthur? Like, what's been going on as of late? And Aunt Polly's like, listen, you asked six, seven questions, basically, since you went in this room. When we move to London, you're gonna have to stop asking questions and stop being a yes man, start basically growing some balls and actually taking charge and having answers, basically. So this kind of coincides with the meeting that happens later in which um, he starts asking, quite, well, he starts making demands, or well, not really demands, but start being more authoritative. Because after, like when Tommy tells everybody that he's on his way, and this is right after he basically um, throws a temper tantrum and starts throwing shit, basically after basically being blackmailed to kill this Irish guy from this particular group. So, um, while, while he's on his way, John says to the group, which includes his uncle, um, Curtis, I believe, the other one of the guys from the member of the group, uh, from the gang, um, Arthur, Aunt Polly, and Finn, by the way, is actually like a teenager at this point. So yeah, so he grew up, um, he grew up quite tall like his brothers, and Esme, um, John's wife that he married last season. So he says, listen, I seal the books, rather basically both the legal aspects and the illegal aspects. We make at least 150 pounds a day, 300 on a really good day. So what sense does it make for us to go all the way to London when we're doing well, um, like right here? 
Like, what sense does it make? So everyone is starting to think that way. Well, except for Aunt Polly. Aunt Polly's looking at um, Esme, um, John's wife, basically correctly um, deducing that she's the one that put the thoughts in John's head about this. So right when this happens, Tommy walks in and he says, listen, um, anyone got anything to say about this? And he was just curious who's going to say anything. And he looked at Esme and started on Paul. He's like, listen, we admire equal rights here. Everyone has a voice here. So Esme said, listen, I may not be by, I may not be related to his family by blood, but I am by marriage. And me and John have a child and I want him to like grow up to see his, I want his father to actually see our child grow. And I'm telling you, I have people in London and I'm familiar with London. That place is totally different from Birmingham. There's, there's a lot of gangs, especially a lot of powerful gangs, even more than here. Especially, I believe, um, the Italian and the Jewish gangs. I think she mentioned that. And she was saying how the police over there, the coppers over there, they work along, they work alongside the gangs, whichever pays them better, whatever, so on and so forth. So you're going to be dealing with an uphill battle if you go to London. You're better off staying here. I mean, what's really the point? So Tommy hears this, and... I'm probably here. They want to hear this, and they're and you know, and it's making sense to them. But at the same time, we all know how Tommy is. Tommy, I mean, Tommy runs things. So Tommy, like, listen, I'm all about ambition and being a go getter. Okay, so if y'all aren't ambitious, then stay here. But which one of y'all actually has some balls and actually have the guts to do something, and try to improve your, your situation, then come alongside with me when the venture is in London, basically. So after this meeting. We have Tommy trying to get the safe woman to get his gun, but Aunt Polly changed the lock. And he tells her, listen, I have to kill this guy, and if I do, I get in well with, like, the Jewish gang, which he views as the most powerful gang, or at least the most beneficial gang to join, you know, to at least have some alliance with compared to the Italian gang. And plus the Jewish gang, I believe, they hold Camden Square or something, which is a very important, vital spot in London. So Aunt Polly is pissed off but she sees the logic behind it so that's what he so she unlocks it and he gets the gun so we have this really interesting scene in which he's like in some type of place where they're doing hammering i guess it's like a smith shop or something like like a smith i couldn't tell what kind of location or or work they're doing but all i know is they were they were working with metals and tools and hammers and all that stuff so his eyes on the target and they have this really sad and beautiful music while this is going on while tommy's like observing this guy knowing what he has to do and once he shoots the guy it was just tragic. The guy literally looks like asleep, like at peace. And you look at Tommy feeling really conflicted about what he did. So, once this happens, um, everything starts to go to crap. Now, before I get to that, let's talk about Arthur. So, Arthur is really starting to have some really, I believe, P really bad PTSD. We see him acting very erratic. Like, at one point, Finn went to get him. And there's like Arthur, like completely have everyone blocked off. He was just jump roping, like incessantly, like you know, like he, like a madman, like his own world. And I believe that when he was outside with Tommy, when they were weighing on John, that Aunt Polly had given him some type of prescriptions from the doctor, which was basically back then I think it was like heroin or something, like liquid heroin, some like some along them lines that would basically keep his stuff in check or some type of medicine. I forgot what it was, but Tommy thought it was crap and he just poured it out, saying that. Um, Arthur didn't need it. So they were supposed to go to London. At first, John and Arthur thought they were just going to London, straight to London with Tommy, but they had to bury the body of the guy who um, Tommy killed. You know, the Irish guy, I believe. Well, the Italian guy, eh, the guy he was supposed to kill. Let's we'll just get to, let's, that's basically the genesis of this, um, the consensus. Um, after that, they go to London, and they're at this really popping club, lots of loud music, all this stuff, which they're not used to, obviously, especially Arthur, who said, yo, it's so effing loud in here, God, can't even think, so they have this really big brawl, and it's because someone, I believe, from the Italian gang was, I believe, from the Italian gang, could have been some other gang, but they recognized them as the Peaky Blinders and thought they were crossing into anime territory without any, um, but at least without, without without even establishing at least some type of meeting beforehand. And the fight happens and the Piggy Blinders whoops everybody's tail. Everybody. Like, you know how they are. They're known fighters. So after that, they have a laugh. You know how those brothers are. And then 
I believe after that we see um, Chief Campbell, and he's making made his way um, down the stairs with the with a kind of like a cane, like a pimp cane in a way. So one thing I forgot to mention earlier in this review, um, Miss, uh, Inspector Campbell actually got shot by Grace. So it turns out the person that got shot in the season one finale was actually Campbell. So he got shot. So at first, at the great shot, you thought he was dead because he was like literally lying in a pool of his own blood. But it turns out he survived, obviously. So the guy that's about to be hanged, he's saying that he um, killed some guy because of Chief Campbell and the Crown. And the governor's hearing his confession, but he's trying not to show to um, basically the, the hangman people that he believes them. Even though once he leaves the door or leaves the room, he tells Campbell that he feels what that guy's telling the truth. But Campbell's like, listen, basically stay in your lane and we know you live. So that's how that conversation kind of ended. So besides that, we see Campbell is, I believe he's in London now. And he has someone which he plans to use to take out the Peaky Blinders or something. <clears throat> something along the lines, I, I'm, I believe. So either way, Tommy's decision to shoot that guy is very, well, very, well have lots of consequences because near the end of the episode, and before I get to that, um, Tommy resumes his relationship with Lizzie. So it seems like they're in a relationship basically. Well, not, well, yeah, they're kind of, they, yeah, yeah, they kind of are in a relationship, you know, since Grace is gone, you know. So besides that, um, Tommy gets the beating of his life. Like Sabino's man, the guy who is basically in charge of the Italian gang in London, he has his men beat the holy crap out of Tommy. And Tommy's bloody, he's beat up, he's offenseless, and if it wasn't for Campbell's men, Tommy would have been dead. So while this is happening, we're seeing Tommy's sister get abducted and potentially might get raped. So that's kind of how um, the episode kind of ends. Another thing that should be noted about this episode is the fact that if I remember, was there anything else this episode besides that? Oh, uh, no, no, no. I got everything, I think. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for watching my review and discussion. I'll give this episode like a 9 out of 10. If you have any comments, write your comments down below. Adios and have a good one.